Welcome back to Watch Is Live, the only show that we shoot here on Watchbox Reviews. Jumping into the chat, I should let you know my stream is rather curtailed by the net connection, so I'm going to do my best to interact and remind you that I will pay you for your time over the next 30 minutes. Link in the description, I'm giving away an Omega Seamaster Railmaster 40mm, the black dial, the full bracelet, box and papers, the complete set, all it needs is your wrist. Link in the description, international eligibility. Though for some reason Rhode Island is excluded. I don't understand it, but everyone else you should be good. Jumping into the box today, I can see we've got friends joining from around the world with Hail Bop. Johnny P joining in, Edward Ledden from Sweden, Andrew Thomas Burnett, Turkish Meister, Jack Purcell, Mason One, Aaron Murphy, we've got Ramim M, we've got Richard T, we've got Russell996. Guys, welcome. Let's jump right into it. I promised you Jajer LeCoult and I am going to deliver. If you hit the clickbait thumbnail, you saw this watch. Let's take a closer look. This is a 200 white, 200 piece white gold limited edition, 42 millimeters from 2011. It's a very special timepiece. Now you can see the photorealistic moon phase with age of the moon inside a pointer style radial date. Now at center, there's a one sixth of a second foudroyant lightning seconds hand. And then right up at two o'clock, you can see the hours and minutes of the day. You'll also note there's a power reserve for the balance and escapement, and then a separate power reserve for everything else you see here. So the escapement has its own power supply to maintain constant amplitude in spite of the fact that the watch is driving several complications as well as center seconds, which I neglected to show you the first time. Now turn it all over, you can see where the power comes from. This is caliber 381, twin mainspring barrels, each with a 50 hour power reserve. You turn the crown in different directions to wind each of those barrels and note the exquisite pocket watch style double ratchets on each wheel with blued screws. This is as good as it gets from Le Sentier, Chagere Le Coult, the Grand Maison, producing a movement that looks like a pocket watch. You can see it uses German silver, but since we are in the Swiss watchmaking region in the canton of Vaux here, we're going to call it my short, which is what they would call it, nickel copper zinc. That's why all of these bridges and plates have a golden hue, not the silver of rhodium plated brass on a conventional watch. You'll also note the depth of the movement. You can look into this one and diagonally through this one, not just down upon it. The balance beats away at 21.6 and it's free sprung. Everything is hand decorated, and of course you have an extraordinary zero reset system on the dial. Not only does this one have hacking seconds, but take a look. Stop seconds for the foudron, stop seconds for the center seconds, and then a second stage that resets everything to perfect alignment top to bottom, resetting to the second and the sixth of a second. It's got all of that, 42 millimeters in white gold. It is not a small watch, but you will see, and I owned this watch in its chronograph version for a lovely four years. It does wear well on a smaller wrist. Now my wrist is 16 centimeters circumference. You can see the watch across the wrist is broad at about 50 millimeters, but it's also flat at about 13 millimeters. It's got a lovely white gold case with the double finished flanks. You can see how the flank of the case is satin finished, and then the lugs themselves are actually black polished, and these are welded lugs. You can see that sharp break between the case band and the lug. The lug is actually welded on and then hand finished to remove all evidence of the solder joint and take a look at the crown on this watch with that double knurling to make it a tactile pleasure to use and that's just the attention to detail paid to the crown where the center is blasted and the logo is relieved and polished that is JLC at its finest by the way that watch designed to run at or better than chronometer rates jumping into the box right here Amro asking Longo when well I can deliver that Richard T love moon faces you're gonna see another one and then we can see Richard also saying, love JLC. And then we've got Sebastian T saying, how easy is it to set up such a piece? Very user friendly. That piece is rock solid and short of dropping it, it's pretty bulletproof. Plus just about everything on this watch with the exception of the single moon phase adjustment between the lugs can be done through the crown or with the date pusher. Now let's jump straight to the Longa because Amro asked and he's one of our show regulars. So I deliver for the folks who deliver for me. Let's take a look at a 38.5 millimeter Alanga Unzona Longa One Moon Phase. Now a few things to shout out. First, it's a lovely composition. Second, you could see that the 
constant seconds is now coaxial with the moon phase, which prevents the upsetting of the classical orientation, and there is a wonderful mathematical geometry predetermined for its aesthetic value. You don't mess up the orientation of the primary register and the sub-seconds. You just add a moon phase. And the moon phase, by the way, is solid gold. The dial is made of solid sterling silver. So you get a lot of precious metal with your longa and thanks to the pusher that allows you to actuate the grand date or the panorama datum, you get the same tactile feel that you would experience with a fine column wheel chronograph, like a datagraph, for example. Now we're gonna see that material again, German silver, nickel, copper, zinc, made golden by the copper and the alloy. All of the hallmarks of modern German watch finish. By the way, three-day power reserve. Let's take a look. Glasuta stripes, they are not Cote de Genève. We're in Saxony now. You can see the pivot jewels are fixed in chaton held in place by fire blued screws. This is pocket watch style and we're paying tribute to the 19th century and F.A. Longa and his family. So you can see that there's a three-quarter style bridge. Again, another tribute to pocket watch style. Note that the half bridge for the balance is freehand engraved underneath the black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism and the cover, the half bridge, for the escape wheel is also black polished. Finally, there's a small sliver of mirrored chamfering along the edge of the bridge and an engine turned perlage on the base plate. All of this in a 38.5 millimeter watch that anyone can wear. I mentioned the JLC is big for a dress watch. The Longa is classical. The 38.5 that first debuted back in 1994 with the first Longa one, it still has that proportional grace and it wears well on any wrist. Rose gold watch, solid gold moon phase disc, sterling silver dial. Jumping into the box right here, we have pilot style 123 saying, but Longa technically has Cote de Genève. It's the same basic process. Cote de Genève in Switzerland, stripes in Germany. They're laid down with an abrasive wheel. Cheap watches will have them stamped. On this caliber of watch, they're laid down the old fashioned way. Basically, a wooden wheel with like sandpaper on the edge, and that's how they create it. And then right here, we could say, Mm, we've got friends joining from Jordan. Marwan is in the box. Thank you for staying up super late in the Levant. Okay, let's jump to a vintage watch. We've seen some fine stuff. Let's talk about sports watches, but let's turn back the clock to 1975 when we first saw a watch that some call the Omega Speedmaster Mark 4.5. Technically, this is not part of the Mark series. What it is is the Omega Speedmaster 176.0012. 41.7 millimeters wide, 44.9 millimeters lug to lug, with a classic 1970s oversized tonneau case. Look at how well this watch has survived. You can see that the dial in its original tritium, all present and correct. You can see that the case with its original radial satin finish laid down with a Swiss lapping machine, almost entirely intact. Not a watch that appears unworn, but a watch that appears never refinished. You can see that radial pattern that can only be laid down on the proper factory equipment. You can also see that the bevel along the flank of the case on both sides has survived completely intact. And the mineral crystal, it's mineral in this era, 1975 to 1986 this watch, the mineral is entirely intact. We have some friends joining us from Switzerland, Germany and Austria, you'll note that this watch features a German calendar. Lamagna 5100 inside doing business as Omega Caliber 1045. It features a 24 hour subdial, a chronograph, it has the day, the date, a double quick set, hacking seconds, and you'll note that there is a radial 60 minute indicator. So you read the minutes and the seconds radially on this dial. Throw in this one on the wrist, it's on a proper Omega. 1162 period bracelet. This is one hell of a survivor. Again, you never expect to find one of these watches in perfect condition, but when you find one that's 95% and never refinished, you've got a real keeper. You can see because it's only 44.9 lug to lug, even on my smallish wrist, this true vintage Speedmaster wears easily. Now you might wonder, why did I call this a Mark 4.5? Speedmaster. Unofficial nickname, it's not a Mark series, but that's because it actually features a unique Mark IV case with the movement from the German market Mark V. So that's why this is sometimes called a Mark 4.5. Stainless steel and very easy to wear in spite of its size. I love this watch to death. I hope it goes to a good home. Now let's talk about a more contemporary Omega. Let's say you don't want to take your vintage watch out in the water. By the way, back in the day, that watch was water resistant to 60 meters. I wouldn't test the theory today, but it was a tough 
stuff kind of watch. Today, I would wear a modern watch if I thought I was going to get wet and wild. And this is one of the rarest modern iterations of the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra you will encounter. Teak deck striation dial, 41.5 millimeters, yellow gold bezel and bracelet and crown with a dial in matching gold. Now you can see the dial is described by Omega as metallic champagne, but it is a perfect tonal match for the yellow gold of the crown case and bezel. You could see that the watch is actually fairly easy to wear. It's only about 48 and a half millimeters lug to lug and 13 millimeters thick. So though it's a large watch, it's not an oversized watch. 60 hour power reserve, Omega exclusive caliber 8500. You can see a little bit of it through the case back. The thing that I always find pleasing about this movement, though it's not artisanally finished, you can actually see if you look the coaxial escapement just below the balance bridge. 60 hour power reserve, coaxial escapement, silicon hairspring, twin main spring barrel, COSC certified Swiss chronometer. It's got the works. It's even got the full balance bridge and the free sprung index for shock resistance. And of course, plenty luminescent. You could see how beautifully detailed that dial is with the gold hands, the gold Omega logo, the gold indices, the gold chaptering, the gold base. It exhausts superlatives and it's a very wearable watch. Jumping into the box right here, Russell 996 saying, I can't work out if I like Omega or not. I think the answer is yes, and you'll find as you discover the sheer breadth and scope of Omega's work past and present, you will find references you like. You'll also find references you hate, but that's the great thing about Omega. It's almost like a universe waiting for you to discover. You might find a few constellations, you might find a few planets, but you're going to find something you like, and you'll like the brand as a whole as a result. And then right here, we have Freddie Turner saying, nearly as ugly as a Rolex in response to the Aqua Terra right there. John Doe begs to differ, saying that gold Omega is badass. And I could see Garrett Miller agrees, Seamaster in gold is beautiful, love the face of that watch. And Jay, a man not just of one name, but of one letter, saying great use of yellow gold. And I concur. Okay, let's jump back to the finer things in life. From our sports watches, we jump back to dress watches and a great one. This model of an existing reference line debuted at SIHH 2011. This was a watch then known as the Patrimony Contemporain, a timepiece now known just as the Patrimony, reference 81180, 40 millimeters in platinum, and here's what was new for 2010, the slate grained gray dial, which is simply exquisite. It has a wonderful blasted-like texture at close range, polished dimple-style minute track outboard. You can see the three-dimensional swell of these applique white gold indices on the dial. You can even see how the hand has been curved and the indices have been curved to match the contours of the dial. It is a beautiful and minimal watch, only 7.2 millimeters thick and knife edged. It features a manufacturer caliber 1400 underneath a case back that is solid platinum. Why would you have a Geneva Hallmark movement under a solid case? Two reasons. One, the solid case back is thinner than a sapphire. Two, because this is a platinum watch and only 45 millimeters lug to lug, 7.2 millimeters thick. You need that extra structural rigidity that comes with the full metal to preserve the integrity of the case and the 30 meter water resistance. Plus, you do get a little bit of extra heft on the wrist and the value of that extra one and a half ounces of platinum. Now you throw this one on my wrist because it's only 45 lug to lug and 7.2 thick. It wears like a second skin. Limpet like on the wrist. It's almost below my wrist hair. That's how flat it is. Absolute comfort, grace, elegance to fit underneath any wrist and underneath the case back because you want to know Geneva Hallmark 40 hour manual wind Vacheron caliber 1400. A manufacture movement properly decorated. You'll also note externally the Geneva Hallmark on the case back because since 2012 the Geneva Hallmark has been a full watch standard, not just the movement. Back in the box right here I can see some of you guys are up to this. Jay is saying, I would love to see the movement. Alexi Simola of Finland saying, Vacheron's simplicity is pure class. Scottish Watch is saying, would you buy that VC over a Patek Philippe Calatrava? It really depends. There are some Calatrava references that I would not favor over that, and I think a great comparison would be something like a 5196P versus that Vacheron 81180, and I would I would pick the Vacheron over that particular manual wind Calatrava, which I think is a nice apples to apples comparison. But I happen to prefer uh, the Pink Lady over the Golden Delicious, and so this is my Pink Lady, and I'm choosing that particular strain of apple. And then right in the box, I could see 
Edward Ledden asking, do you follow Formula One? If so, which team? I'm a long-suffering McLaren fan. I remember the glory days of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard, and those seemed like great times compared to the late state of affairs. That said, they're not as bad, quite as bad, as they've been. All right, let's jump into a watch that splits the difference between the tough stuff and the good stuff. Let's talk about a watch that came out last year from Blumpin. This is the 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe Complete Calendar. 43 millimeters in stainless steel. You can see this is a minimal vintage inspired case. No crown guards, big crown aesthetic. The crown is oversized, 10 millimeters in diameter. You can see that the case flank itself is very minimal. Everything is satin, no polish. The lugs are squared off, minimally beveled. This is designed to look like an old school dive watch until you get to the dial, which is a triple calendar moon face. Anthracite sunburst dial. You can see the hour indices are outboard of the inboard pointer style date with the lunette indicator. Now, the watch is still 300 meters water resistant in spite of the case flank pusher adjusters. It is a manually finished watch. You turn it over and you realize how gracefully it's been executed. Note that there's both satin channeling around the gold rotor and a blasted center. You can see that there's a satin finish across the bridges. You can note that there is a mirrored chamfer or anglage on the edge of every bridge as well as in every jewel and screw countersink. There are black polished screws with chamfered slots. There is engine turned perlage on the base plate. This is the caliber 6654P, complete calendar, automatic winding, three day power reserve, 4 hertz beat rate, free sprung for durability, adjusted in 6 positions rather than a chronometer 5. Very nicely executed, and this is a watch that still glows like a torch in the dark and gives you that dive watch legibility by day. Blancpain was smart to put the indices outboard of the calendar. Now listen to the bezel because the bezel is part of the experience of a dive watch. I'm going to put this one up against the microphone and let you have a listen. Now you can hear it's a chunky kind of bezel. It's not the silky glide of the standard 5015. This has its own voice and its own feel. It's a bit more raw, it's a bit more visceral, and in terms of bezel feel, I actually prefer this over the over-refined feel of something like a Grand Seiko Diver, a standard 5015, 50 Fathoms, or like a Rolex Dive Watch, a Sea Dweller, or a Sub. A really nice watch. Throw it on the wrist, you can see 49.9 millimeters lug to lug, and not thick. Only 13.4 despite the automatic winding, 300 meter resistance, rotating bezel, and the complete calendar. So this is a big watch, but an easy one to wear. And you can see I'm I'm easily shipping it with pl plenty of space on either side of either lug. So you can wear this on even a smaller wrist. A great 2018 edition from Blancpain. A bit fatuous, but very fabulous. And I have to remind you, most of the time we wear our dive watches at the office where a calendar complication can really come in handy. And then right here I can see Kim B agrees with me. That Blancpain is the bee's knees. And true lie saying Blancpain is seriously overlooked. Richard K asking, Tim, how much value is on the desk? The answer is $285,000. I was ready for you. All right, let's jump back to the special stuff. A brand we don't often discuss, but which I revere greatly, Parmigiani Fleurier. And this is the Tom de Couture retrograde annual calendar. A 40 millimeter white gold watch with modular teardrop style lugs. It's only 45.5 millimeters lug to lug. So this is a watch that even a very small wrist can wear and you can really see how much clearance I've got on both sides. Now the dial, let's turn this one right side up for comprehension's sake, features a double moon phase, north and south hemisphere. It features a 31 day retrograding calendar. It features a day, it features a date, and you'll note center seconds with a hacking feature. There's also a wonderful three dimensionality to this dial, starting with the delta style hands, that's what Parmigiani calls them, and they are loomed, and then you go through several different layers of dial, the hour and the date track outboard, the sub registers, the logo, the hands, and then the base of the moon face, and all of this with a Parmigiani manufacture caliber, note automatic winding, twin mainspring barrels, 50 hour power reserve, you can see those twin barrels peeking out, and the true rose lathe cut golden winding mass. This is a beautiful looking movement, and it is actually related to the same base caliber used by Richard Mille. So not only does it have pedigree, but it has famous associations. This watch in white gold is easy to wear on any wrist and a dynamic way to display a calendar. An everyday wearable annual calendar, you need to adjust it only once per year, the jump from February to March. You can see those modular teardrop style lugs and how dramatically cambered they are. Michel Parmigiani wanted a shape that separated the case from the ergonomics and that's exactly what he got. 
and I could see pilot style fleur, uh, one two three saying Parmesani Fleurier sounds like Parmesan cheese and floral patterns for me. It's a silly reason not to be interested, but that's the way it is. That's okay. It's an emotional and irrational hobby, and I could see Simon Holt Ch late. He says, but always welcome, Simon. You're a regular on the channel. He says he always loved Ferrari when he was young in their glory days. They had. Michael Schumacher and uh, an Irish lad he loved named Eddie Irvine, who ironically wound up making more money in real estate than he ever made as the second fiddle to Schumacher. Okay, let's jump to a brand that Michael would recognize, Audemars Piguet, he and now his son ambassadors, and let's talk a little bit about the Royal Oak. Now you can see the Royal Oak in its chronograph form here, the latest, boldest post-2017 dial in case. Now the dial changed in 2017. Large registers for hours and also minutes. By the way, I think Mick Schumacher might actually be a Richard Mill guy. My mistake. You can see hours and minutes for the chronograph with minimized small seconds. Now another feature that changed for 2017, though it's not visible, is the change from screw down to simulated screw down chronograph pushers. So we still get that hexagonal crown-like shoulder to bolster the pusher, but you no longer have to screw down or screw up to access the chronograph or secure your watch against water. Still 50 meters water resistant. How much do you love that chocolate pantograph engraved tap Grand Tapisserie dial? Petite Tapisserie is the jumbo. Grand Tapisserie is the 41 millimeter watch. And then Mega Tapisserie is the offshore. I love the, the brown and golden, rose golden tones. A very warm look. Now this watch though, a 41 is only 11 millimeters thick. It is very broad though. I have to remind you that if you buy a Royal Oak, buy one size smaller than you think you need. Because this watch at 41 is actually 50 55.5 millimeters when you measure end link to end link across the wrist, though on the strap, a non-hornback gaiter, I find it does wear a little bit better than on a bracelet or a hornback gaiter. If you're going to wear it on a small wrist, get the diver strap or get this particular leather combo. It's the way to wear the watch if you've got a small wrist like me, but you could see I have no margin for error there. If this wasn't a perfect fit for the shape of my wrist, I'd probably be out of luck even at 16 centimeters circumference. A lovely piece, and in my opinion, unless you really need 100 meter water resistance, get a Royal Oak chronograph rather than an offshore. It's a better value, it wears better, I think it's closer to the original Genta design, and I think it will age better. Jumping in right here, I could see we have Jean-Claude Beaver, not Beaver, saying that one looks sick on the wrist, and then Aaron M saying bracelet would be so good. He's a fan of the full bracelet integration design. And then Freddie Turner saying, any Royal Oak off a bracelet is missing the entire point of the design, surely. One might say it's like a muscle car on donut tires, perhaps. Interesting analogy. Turn that one over in your head, see if it makes sense to you. Let's talk about a watch that retails for $1,850 and even less pre-owned. One of the real stars back in 2015 at Basel was the Oris Divers 65, turning back the clock with a classical look that's the antithesis of the Pro Diver or the Aquas. This is a minimalist, no crown guard, highly cambered, plexi-like sapphire, and as you can see, minimal size at 40 millimeters with a very simple, slim, historically inspired case profile. Now you can see that the strap is a perforated embossed pattern designed to evoke the tropic straps of the 60s and 70s, and it's nicely evacuated on the bottom with ventilation and air pockets to avoid trapping wrist heat. Plus, look at the value. Oris giving you these little pull tab spring bars so that you can easily remove the strap knowing that guys who buy this kind of watch like to swap straps. It's a lovely light duty diver, 100 meters means snorkeling and light duty scuba only, but a fun timepiece and a great way to get into a steel men's luxury dive watch without spending a fortune. You can see it on the wrist, easy to wear, plenty of clearance on each side, and I love that domed sapphire. It really does have the charming off-axis distortion of a plexiglass from the 1960s. A great timepiece and tank tough, Oris Divers 65. Then we have... Uh Kim Bowen asking, Tim, just wear the AP higher on the arm. It's tough to wear, a, well, I mean, unless I wear it on my bicep, which I guess is an option, it's tough to wear a watch high on the arm without it migrating down, because if you open up the strap enough to wear it up here, inevitably it's going to be shaken loose and then hula hoop around your wrist. So maybe you've pulled that off, I haven't. And right here I could see Jean-Claude Beaver saying, Royal Oak chronograph over the offshore all day long. Let's talk about a watch that is a bit 
further up the tech tree and the pecking order. This is an Apex Predator of the Deep. This is a watch that came out in 2017 that modified and in many ways upgraded the much-loved 2013 Panerai Luminor Submersible 1950 a magnetic. Now that was the 389 in 2013. This is the 1389. Titanium 47 millimeters and you can see that it features a ceramic insert on top of the bezel. Three day power reserve. Manufacture movement 9010. This one's actually a little bit thinner than the old 389. You can see the Saloro Alanta Corsa on the back. The manned torpedo used most notably by Italian commandos in the 1941 raid on Alexandria, the British fleet in the Mediterranean. Um, and of course, this watch, part of the 2017 to present 1389. If you like your paramilitary Panerai, this is a great example. It's a what-if watch. The, the frogmen of the Desma Flotilla never had anything this fine as they slouched through the mud and the grime, but the bottom line is for a big watch, it wears well. They'd be proud. The timepiece fits on my baby wrist, and you can see I actually have a little bit of clearance on each side, but not a whole lot. The good news is in titanium, it wears fairly light. And of course, you've got that iconic Panerai locking guard. This is something that the Italian tack war guys of the 1940s wouldn't have known. It was introduced in the 1950s, but it remains an icon of Panerai and very smart. It's easy to dive with a crown not properly screwed down. It's hard to miss this red flag. And there's a cam system inside, and you can see the little roller that's built into the cam that compresses the crown and gives you that 300 meters of water resistance. Plus, the crown guard gives you all aspect protection against shock, abrasion, and shearing. Much more protection than and a shouldered crown guard, and I believe this is the best bezel tent in the business with competition only from Doxa. Let's take a listen. It's chunky and it's got a little bit of a spring in it, a sprightly and chunky dive bezel, PAM 1389. All right, let's jump back to the nice things. Let's talk about one from Germany and not a longa. This is part of a model line that bowed at Basel World 2008 and everyone else immediately asked, why didn't we think of that? This is the Glasuta Original Pano Inverse. 42 millimeters in stainless steel, all the action is on the dial side. It's basically everything you love about German watchmaking without having to remove the watch from your wrist. Now you can see this is caliber 6606, manual wind. There's a power reserve, as you're seeing it, just below the balance. There is a jeweled drivetrain featuring screw fix chaton like the Longa, and you can see both sides of that balance bridge, not just one, with black polished swan's neck indices for fine adjustment of beat error and freehand engraving, so no two are exactly alike. Now the watch, we'll turn it right side up so you can see it a bit more easily, features a DLC anthracite coated set of German stripes. They have that three quarter style bridge and I'm gonna show you them side by side. They have all of these design features of the Longa, but on the dial side of the watch, you see the stripes, the engine turning, the free hand engraving, the jewels set in chaton fixed by screws. You can see the balance, you can see the escapement, all of that and the ability to tell time a glorious and ingenious system of aesthetics that's also very functional, has a wonderful three-dimensionality from the applique dial all the way down to the base of the movement. You can turn it over. It looks good on the opposite side. There are two black polished access ports and more jewels set in chaton, but all the action is here. And again, you don't have to remove it from the wrist to enjoy. This is the heart and soul of Glasuta Original. If they have one icon, this is it. This is the one to own if you can only own one. And I could see Matt Foster joining in saying he missed most of the show. That's okay, it lives forever once it buffers and uploads. And I've got Watch Aficionado saying Geo rocks, and then Jean Claude Beaver saying illegible but still sick as you know. And then right here we have Roy P saying great watch, reasonably priced too. And then we have Mason One saying, I should like that, but somehow it's not grabbing me. It's not for all. Sometimes it just doesn't strike you. That said, you have plenty of options. We go from fine things 
to outrageous things, though I'm not going to undersell IWC's manufactured watchmaking, but this watch is too large for my wrist. This, launched in 2012 and made through 2015, is the IWC Big Pilot's Watch, it should be called the Very Big Pilot's Watch, Top Gun Miramar, reference 5019-02, 48 millimeters in black polished ceramic with titanium hardware. It has the Miramar dial with that faded tobacco brownish black, the Ecru style coloration, a Fotina treatment with a few red accents, and as you can see, the Arabic numerals 1 through 12 are inboard on the scale, and the 60 minute scale is outboard. This is a watch that features IWC's own manufacturer caliber 51111, that's a lot of ones, 7 day power reserve, power reserve indicator, automatic winding, and properly sized for the case. The watch is 48 millimeters in diameter and 58 millimeters lug to lug, so this is a huge timepiece. It's fairly light because of the ceramic and the titanium, but you should have a large wrist before wearing this watch or you'll just look foolish. Now, the logo on the case back. This is not actually a U.S. Navy logo or any part of the Top Gun program. If you check the original 1986 movie poster, that's the logo from the movie poster. So yes, there is such a thing as the Navy Fighter Weapons School, and it's no longer at the old, it's no longer at the old Miramar base. But it does not use that logo. That's all Tom Cruise. Inside, all Schaffhausen, and a good-looking watch. But you do need the wrist for it, and I recommend 18 centimeters circumference or larger. Oh, right, jumping into the box right here. Some comment about Game of Thrones. Oh, here we go. Jean-Claude Biver saying, seriously, who can wear this stuff? The mountain from Game of Thrones? Uh, yeah, probably. That guy, who I believe is six foot nine, 400 pounds, is your one legitimate customer for that watch. It would look like a date just on his wrist. And I have right here Richard K saying, I absolutely love the Miramar. I do love that dial, and I do love the polished ceramic case, and I do love that it doesn't scratch. All right, in the box, we got a lot of friends here, but we got too many on the table. I got to make some choices. Let's go straight for the best of the best. Patek Philippe 5550P Advanced Research 4, launched in 2011 in 300 pieces with a vertically satin grain steel style silver dial and yellow gold accents in the form of indices and hands. This was the culmination of the 2005 to 2011 Advanced Research series. Full platinum, diamond between the lugs at 12 o'clock, which you can see right there, and on the case back, a built-in loop for caliber 240Q. What's different, what isn't? 70 hour power reserve instead of approximately 48. You can see the Gyromax SI balance, a combination of silicon and yellow gold. It is a yoke style, it's not a wheel. You can also see the escapement featuring the Pulsamax silicon lever, the Silinvar silicon escape wheel, and then there's a free sprung uh, Spiromax silicon hairspring. All of these, the wheel, the lever, the hairspring, and the balance, known as Oscillamax. And all that technology only comes together in this watch. It's the only place you'll see all of these features together. Micro rotor automatic, you could see all of the hand finish, the Anglage, the Cote de Genève, the engine turning. There's even a coined ridging on the beveling of the 22 carat micro rotor. This is the one to own if you're going to own just one of the advanced research series. I say if you can, collect the set, but if you're going to own just one, own the one that has all the technology and the only one of the series that was a perpetual calendar. Throw this one on the wrist. You can see how special this timepiece is. Very wearable. A watch that has the gravitas to match any wrist size, even a tree trunk, but it's nicely proportioned and dimensioned for those who have smaller wrists, only nine millimeters thick and very substantial in platinum. A lovely DeLorean style dial with that brushed steel like effect. And I should also mention, for you Rolex fans out there, Cellini. If you want Rolex toughness and accuracy, there's nothing better than a reference 50, 39 millimeter rose gold Cellini date. You get the date, you get the lovely sunburst style guilloche dial, and it's a deep, rich grooving. This is not a conventional sunburst. This is a three-dimensional sunburst. You can see the mini sunburst inside of the date indication and a fun feature that we're not used to seeing on Rolex watches. On Omegas, we're used to seeing the stepping time zone feature for the hand of the hours. But here, you get that feature and you get it on a Rolex. So you can actually keep telling time. Note the watch is not stopped. And I can actually drive that hand independently as I travel 
driving the date forward or backwards. You can see the date jumping forward and backwards as I cross the international date line. A lot of fun. 39 millimeters. The movement's just as tough as you'll find on a Submariner. Full balance bridge, free sprung index, overcoil hairspring, and power chrome blue anti magnetic COSC chronometer. 39 millimeters and only 45.5 millimeters lug to lug. This is one of the rare cases where you'll see a modern Rolex watch with a strap and a pin buckle. And the nice thing about getting your Rolex watch on a strap is it opens avenues to customization. You can get custom straps and aftermarket options that never look right on a bracelet shod Rolex watch. And of course, I promised you a pin buckle. Here it is, one of the few you'll see on a modern Rolex. That is a good looking watch. Elemental, all you need right there. The Cellini's hugely underrated. Would I recommend you buy them new? Probably not, there's a lot of depreciation, but pre-owned, it's Rolex accuracy and toughness in a dress watch package. If you have a Rolex collection, you should have one dress watch. Now let's talk a little bit about the Nomos Zurich, designed by the late Hans Vetstein. This is a series of strong Carrera lugged Nomos watches. They are somewhere between sports watches and dress watches in style. Now you can see the Zurich Veltzeit, a world time or dual time with the night blue dial, Nachtblau, beautifully satin grained. It's a blasted style finish. And then you have the Zurich with the date. Do you prefer simplicity or do you prefer complication? I'm a complication guy. Both of these watches are fractions of a millimeter under 40 millimeters in diameter. Both of them feature Nomos manufacturer calibers, which you could see right here. They're good looking movements, and you can see that double spiral on the reduction wheel of the winding system. That part of the movement is always finished by hand. They have one guy who's an ace at making that spiral, and he makes it over and over again. In-house calibers, your flavor of Zurich, offered both ways. Okay, Tudor. Another way to get into a dive watch from a great brand that'll be around forever, but this is a different kind of Heritage Black Bay. This is the 2016 Black Bay Dark. 41 millimeters, it's stainless steel, but it's black PVD, no date dial. You can see this one features a lovely triangular index on its rotating bezel, no crown guard profile, and it's got snowflake that is 1968 to roughly 1976 Tudor snowflake submariner style hands on the dial. So it's a a pastiche of vintage Tudor cues, some dating back to the Submariners of the 50s, but it's a lovely combination, well chosen, on a NATO style strap that actually works like a conventional strap. You can see a Clevis style counterweighted pin buckle with the Tudor shield built in, clever, and then you can see that it uses conventional apertures, so you simply insert into the pin buckle and size. No need to worry about the gooseneck style tangle of strap components on a conventional NATO. In-house caliber, 70 hour power reserve, silicon hairspring, CO OSC certified, 200 meters water resistant. Let me see, what else have I got here? I've got some good stuff. I've got another Patek Fleet Perpetual Calendar. Another watch from 2016, this is the 5327R. Note a few features of the dial. First, applique Breguet style rose gold numerals, very special. Second, leaf hands at center. These point right back to the design cues of the original Calatrava. Finally, a gloss ivory lacquer dial that appears wet bottomless and lustrous, a perpetual calendar with another caliber 240 micro rotor. This is an awesome 39 millimeter Patek Philippe complication with more nuance about its design than you might expect. Look at those black polished hollow concave scallops on the flanks of the lugs and the concave bezel profile that visually pairs the mass, a graceful and immaculately detailed watch front, back and profile. And finally, because I'm a fanboy of the brand, Zenith. The manufacturer of Laloque, established in 1865, one of the first complete manufacturers in Switzerland, Georges Favre Jacot would be proud of this 2010 Zenith El Primero Tourbillon Chronograph. 44 millimeters in stainless steel, Zenith El Primero caliber, 52 hour power reserve, Tourbillon, and note the Tourbillon features a circumferential quick adjust date. Let me show you how this date works because it's absolutely brilliant. Now, the tourbillon, we'll talk about that in a moment, but look at the date around it. Now that I've pulled the crown out all the way, 
I can rotate the date around the tourbillon with the quick set system. So you even retain the El Primero's quick set function. Now look at the tourbillon carriage. Entirely hand finished. The back of the movement is mostly mechanically executed, but the carriage is entirely hand finished. And you could see it looks like a flying tourbillon. There is actually a second sapphire under the top sapphire. You could see it at that angle. Let me see if I can get it back. But there's a sapphire over the tourbillon carriage that makes it look like it's a flying tourbillon with no upper bridge and no obstruction of your view of the hand finishing or the 10 beat per second, 36,000 vibration per hour El Primero escapement. Throw it on the wrist and you can see this is a rare 44 that wears easily. 50 meters water resistant, stainless steel, a no joke tourbillon chronograph that you could wear every single day. I can't necessarily say that of every high horology grand complication style watch, but this one has those El Primero bona fides in terms of precision and durability. Nice, not terribly thick, wearable on a small wrist, and as good as things get in stainless steel complications from the folks in La Loque. If I were ever to start a new collection with a theme, it would be Zenith, Longa, or Zin. Zenith, you're on my radar. And I hope Zenith is on your radar. Thank you so much to everyone who joined. Link in the description, win that Omega Railmaster. I'm giving it away, international eligibility. All it needs is your wrist. Thank you so much for joining me at Tim underscore Maso on Instagram. Remember, open a new window, keep me streaming, pick up your phone, Tim underscore Maso, all video reviews, hundreds now available. You can literally binge watch my 60 second watch reviews and I'm updating tonight. Thanks to you, thanks to my crew, especially our new crew member behind the center camera. Time out, Tim out, and thank you for logging on.